oh, oh, he- hello. <laughs> I sound like Santa Top. Oh, hello, good little bottom. What's What did I stuff down your stocking this holiday season? <laughs> okay. All right. Hi, guys. How's it going? Uh, happy Monday, everybody. Great episode today. Uh, one of our last episodes that we've been holding out on because we have Rachel Ballinger on the podcast this week, which you've been requesting her for a really long time, and we coordinated, and I am also on her podcast this week, which comes out on Wednesday, and that's why I've been holding off. And this is also a very special episode because it's our last episode with special guest co-host, Allie Colbert, um, whom I also know you guys love so much, and it's a really, really fun episode. We get into Rachel's coming out process, including her very toxic breakup with a man. So, so funny. One of the funniest stories that I've heard on the podcast. So go listen, listen to this one. It's a fun one. Um, and then as always, you know, really trying to plug the, the Patreon here. If you look, if you're watching on the YouTube, you're looking behind me, you can see we're decorating the studio. We've got it all soundproof for you now. So the quality should be getting better and better. And all of that is because of donors giving $1, uh, you know, a month. It would make a huge difference. So, you know, consider it your Christmas gift to yourself. There's lots of perks on there. Patreon.com slash WHGS. And then I've got Phoenix, Salt Lake City, Chicago, all those coming up, and we're adding more all the time. So get on the text alert, and I will text you when I'm in your city. All right. This episode is brought to you by Foria. Yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more, deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible. And you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley or use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order. I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil. You'll thank me later, listener. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, listener. Ah, tis the season for clean balls. For, For those of you who love someone with balls or have balls, Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. Go ahead and win this year's white elephant gift and help all the men win this year's white elephant gift and help all the people in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December and save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. Save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. That's right. 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Seven, eight years, I was in a relationship with a man who was a piece of shit. I tried to break up with him and he said no. And I was like, oh shit. So we continued to live together while also just not speaking. We didn't speak. We lived in the same house and didn't speak for like about a year. He avoided me because he knew I wanted to break up with him. I didn't realize I was gay. I just had no idea. And I had lost my entire sex drive. And then I opened TikTok one day and there was a gay woman and just just did a thirst trap. And I went, well, I'm wet. (laughs) (laughs) Alex, are we recording? This is very important. This is super important content. I got to clap. And for gay podcasts, you actually just smack your ass cheeks together. That's cheeks what together. you. That's what you. That's do. That's how you do claps. You actually do a scissoring of vulva to vulva smack. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather to, do that one. Slate. Yeah. Can we get a cut hit? <laughs> Can we get uh, some lupia flap on that? Oh, oh, I like. I like you being here. You do. It's so nice to have someone who's funny immediately. Really? Wow. Okay. Great. I'm off to a good start then. Fuck yeah! I love it. There's I love a lot the of pressure on you now. No, we're good. We go way back. Way, way back. We really go a long time back, but now the friendship's been hot for like a year and a half. The, the friendship has been good. I've been a bad friend. I think. No, no, you're always so... God I, I, damn it. <laughs> Every time I see you, I need to pull her out of a dark <laughs> hole. And by the way, oh. the subscribers, they tick up and up and up. <laughs> and she has to increase her meds with each new batch. Yes, it's true. It's the more successful I get, the more neurotic I the become. The more depressed she is. The apartment's bigger. It's messier. <laughs> that tracks. 
It's just why well, just move. I know, I know. It's like I, this room ago. though makes me want to not ever engineer my own podcast. I know it is like it is like a whole thing, and Alex all, is all over it, and I'm pretending it doesn't. Wait, can we just say we're in the apartment, we're having gay sex? Yeah. yeah. Two big updates because we have a long time requested huge YouTuber, podcaster, content creator, gay. <laughs> Rachel okay. Ballinger! Pew, 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 hey. the air horn? <laughs> Rachel Ballinger, highly requested guest. It's so fun to get so many highly requested guests on the pod. Oh, yeah, because you're famous, so people want to collab with you. Well, I'm, no, I'm not famous. You're famous. <laughs> they're requesting uh, you. Yeah, they're requesting you. On your How podcast. How do we get you? How do uh, we get you? Uh, honestly, <laughs> my yeah. assistant slash best friend is a mega fan of yours, and she's like, do you oh. know Ashley Gavin? Do you know Ashley? And I was like, I don't know. And then she's like, she follows you on Instagram. You stupid face. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then I saw you DM me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something that I do when I can't get someone is yeah. I say to my... <gasps> There's a pussy. Yeah, he's trapped oh, hi, Fulton. in here. <laughs> Fulton, do you want to be in here for the recording or do you want to be with Sydney? He loves Sydney. He does? Yeah. Um, hi, Fulton. You Everyone's- allergic to cats? I'm allergic to cats and oh. uh, I can't stand them. <laughs> Because you're allergic or because they're Satan spawn? Just can't stand kind of the way they act. Look how friendly he's being. Oh, he loves you. That's a good cat. That's a good cat. I know. He heard you. I don't get cats. Like, why are you acting like you're better than me? You Because they are. I don't don't think he is. I think he heard you and was like, how how can I make you? This is just beautiful. Cats always want the person that hates them. Wow. I feel like this is a lot for a cat. Right? He's he's really sweet. He's very dog like. Oh, that's what everyone mm. says. By the way, that's what everyone says about a good cat. I it's don't, a dog. I, yeah, do a bit. <laughs> do gonna, a nice clean tonight show bit, you piece just, of shit. I just booked my seven Dogs and cats. Nah, <laughs> good cats are like dogs. You know the thing about airplanes. <laughs> the captain gets up there, he's like, We're at six thousand feet. Who cares? <laughs> it's Who very cares? Jerry Seinfeld. Well, put over more here. Seinfeld in. Who cares? Who cares how high up I mean, we are? I literally was like, I fu- look at how oh playing my. hard to get works. Oh my gosh. I was like, I don't like cats. The cat's like, I want to sit on you. Um, Rachel, this is also a really fun episode because Allie, who is a frequent guest on the pod, is co-hosting today. Because Perfect. I usually have like a semi-permanent co-host situation mm-hmm. and I haven't found that person yet. Oh, so we've been. So rotating. you usually have it, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, for two years it existed, and then the most because I kind of knew immediately who was available. Yeah, but lately people historically historically, but lately people haven't been available. Like Maddie Weiner's been co-hosting, but she's up for a major thing in TV, so we're waiting to find out about that. Okay, Maddie Weiner's up for a major thing, and uh, and Allie was totally. Available. I'm up for nothing. Yeah, so, so you're free, but you're in I'm LA. Free. I'm in LA, but I'm here now. But you're here now, and yep. you're. If you haven't watched those episodes, you should go back and watch those episodes. Allie is like such a talented comedian. She's done the Tonight Show seven thousand times. She did that show with Lily Singh that may or may not be on the air anymore. I'm I not sure. It it's gone. I don't it's think gone. it lasted very but long. A huge, huge, huge YouTuber. Yeah, you know, Lily Singh. Lily Singh. Yes, yes. She's really nice. I, is she? I've met her. She's yeah. She's a really great human. Did you, Wait, did you meet her at the YouTube parties? <laughs> I did meet her at YouTube parties, but she was friends with my uh, sister. What so. happens at these YouTube parties, huh? Um, a lot of schmoozing. <laughs> what kind of sick shit? What the it's, hell do you losers it's, get up to? I actually hate YouTube parties. It's mainly like uh, it's very high school of like who's got the more subscribers yeah. and everyone's trying to hang out with the most popular person. And yeah. uh, I hate that shit. So I'm like, OK. And I just grab my free drink with my free drink ticket and then leave. <laughs> I hate that shit, too. I hate it in comedy. Yeah. Oh, my. well, comedy, it's the worst. But you're very good at it. I will say, Allie. I don't want anything to do with people. And you seem to do a really good job. Well, we always come up against this. This is what we talk about. That Ashley thinks I'm an industry darling. You are. And Ashley thinks she's sort of the outcast. I am. Same. Um, kind of bootstrapping <laughs> yeah. your way to success. But the thing that's getting annoying now is that you're more successful. <laughs> so for a while, I kind of loved that this. Is, that is sort of annoying. I, I could see why that's annoying And now I'm like, you. all right, well, slow down. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm, I do think you're an industry darling, and I think any second now, any second now, they'll give you what you need. I hope so. I, I also hope so, because I genuinely want success for my friends. 
Thank you. So I, that I they can hire me. I want success for a few people, and you're one of them. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'm doing okay. I just, I'm, I guess I, I'm facing a lot of rejection right now. I was pitching this TV show. What happened? This is boring. Thank you for being here. I know everyone already knows who you are, but where can people find you, and what are you working on that you're most excited about to direct some of our fans over to your stuff, even though they already know who you are? Um, I'm Rich Bounder. <laughs> I do YouTube. Um, I have a main channel where I test products. I have a vlog channel where I vlog my daily life. I have a podcast channel where I have two podcasts. One, I talk about the things on the internet that happened that week, and then one is Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me. I do talk a lot about gay sex over there, uh, sex That's in general, great. and body parts, uh, and I answer and questions. And I'll be doing it. It, right in November, we're, we're yes. scheduled. Yes, uh, Which I'm you, really excited about when you come out for Irvine. You have shows. You have shows December. in Irvine, right? Yeah, yeah. I have shows in Irvine. Thank you for yeah. plugging my shit. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> we should probably introduce ourselves. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Rachel Ballinger today. Um, thank you for being here. And then, well, as always, I'm Ashley Gavin. Introduce yourself in this format, Rachel. I'm Ashley Gavin. I'm a cis gay white woman. She her pronouns. Now, usually. I have a, a, someone to keep me from getting canceled. That's the role <laughs> of the co-host. But you're not going to be good at that. I'm going to be really bad at that. I actually think I, I, get, I probably have a higher chance of getting canceled than you, but I'll do my best. I agree, but I think, I think these are the... I think... Thank you, Fulton. Is that ta- <laughs> the cat typing? <laughs> yeah, he's on, he was on, gave us a golf clap. Allie hates this. I don't hate the cat. I actually really like the cat. I just don't want to uh, start sneezing during the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear I'm not making it up. You know, a lot of people make up cat allergies. I know because I've, I've had sex with a woman who then told me she couldn't have sex with me again because of a cat allergy. No, that, I really have people make that up. Allergy. People make that up. Why? I, I, I don't know why. Not to have, so they don't want to have sex with me. Wow. They must really not want to have sex with you. Just to lie about it. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, she was like straight and I think had like a total panic attack. Oh. And I think oh. she blamed the panic attack so let her on blame the, the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She totally. It's the, the kind thing to do to be like, yes, they it can't was fight your... back. All right. Yeah. Totally. Am I introducing myself in that way? Yes, but I also wanted to like kind of give you because yeah. you know, Kate was our canceled coach. Yeah. Maddie is our gay virgin. Oh. Gara was the youth in the sound booth. Oh. But because we're really unable to cancel each other because we sort of are the same person. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. So what are you gonna call me? So I think we're just two I think we're just two guys hanging out. Yeah, we <laughs> we a hundred percent are two guys hanging two out. Two head guys hanging out. This isn't a gay podcast anymore. Boys gonna be boys. Boys are gonna be boys. When Ali Colbert is on the podcast, it's yeah. just two guys. Yeah. I'm immediately yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Come Why? On, come on, Rachel. What's your fucking deal? She's all of a sudden you're pretending you're not a dyke, please. Yeah. Stop. Uh, anyway, listen. do you mind introducing yourself? <laughs> I'm Allie Colbert. Pronouns she, her. What am I supposed to say? I'm white? Yeah, you're a lesbian. <laughs> I'm a lesbian. Uh, I'm a lesbian. I'm, I'm uh, engaged. I'm the boy one. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Perfect. That's me. And Rachel. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. You, I feel instant comfort around you. Me too. Me too. Rachel, do you uh, mind introducing yourself? In that I don't format, mind at all. Sort of? Uh, yeah, Rich Ballinger, uh, she, her, cis, white, gay woman there. I had to think about it. <laughs> I know. It's a lot. It's, it's, yeah, a, it's lot a lot to let people know who yeah. you are. I don't have to label myself often. I usually just go gay and that's it. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think we there like to do it because we like, you know, sometimes people listen at home and sometimes yeah. the things don't come up, but representation matters or whatever. Because I'm like the more yes. cancel. F- I'm like the cancel. I'm cancel no, coaching myself. Representation yeah, you are. matters, and it's nice to uh, to share that information off the top. Yeah, I agree. Your eyebrows look incredible today. Wow, I gotta do mine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. I like your Damn. outfit too. You like my outfits a lot. I, think. I know. I like the way you dress. Thank you. I uh, you know, I would love to go shopping with you sometime. Could we do that? That would be really fun for Alex. Me. Could you videotape us going shopping? Oh my God, let's do that. Okay, you want right, to do it we this gotta, week? I really feel, I do want to do it, but I do feel like I should be focusing on Rachel. I know, we no, really good. aren't. We're, but I, I'm not I do want to take, I would love to so go I'm shopping good. with you. That would be really good. The thing is, Rachel, we haven't seen each other in a while. I and understand And I haven't completely. seen you in so long, Rachel. By the way, where <laughs> are you, Rachel? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Southern California. I'm right outside LA. You're right outside LA. So why not yeah. LA, huh? Uh, Because it's gross and hot there, and I live in a beach town, which is like 70 70 degrees all year round, and uh, there's- What's the the town, Yeah, what's the town, Rachel? What's the town? What's the town? I don't know who knows that's better than LA. 
<laughs> think you're I onto something? <laughs> I don't normally announce my town, but uh, it's. Oh, you don't. You don't. What? What? Oh, oh. yeah, for sure. Surf's up. Baby. Do you want us to bleep it? Do you want us to bleep it? Uh, nah, you're fine. All right. Are you worried people might come to your home and find you? Yes, I've had people come to my home before. Listen, so Rachel, it, wait, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Back, uh, yeah, back when I lived in LA. So, because if people think, like, the more you put out on the internet, the more they get to know, like, they're allowed to know. And uh, my address got leaked. And people were like, well, it's out there, so I'm allowed to come by. And I've had people come by before. And Gay I just, people? Uh, Lesbians uh, no. showing up at your door? No, this was before I was out. I only recently came out. Um, Are you serious? I came out about a year and a half ago. Both you of you just got so really invested in me. A year oh, and shit. a half you ago? You seem so gay. You yeah. have only come out a year and a half ago. You're incredibly gay. You're like I a know. good wine gay. Like you're an age yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what I've you been told. I mean? This gay was trapped in a barrel <laughs> in a closet for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, I was just aging to perfection before I came out. So uh, here I am. Uh, yeah. How so old this are is, you? I'm 31. Rachel. Actually. I'm so proud of you. Good Thank job, you. Rachel. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Round of applause. Do you want to be in charge of the sound? I, I would fucking love it. <laughs> so what I'm did dying it? to get my hands on this well, since I came How over. like deeply closeted were you? Like, I mean, that is like a late in life gay. Uh, yeah. So I was in a, a long term. It was about how long was it? Seven, eight years. I was in a relationship with a man who was a piece of shit, and uh, I just got really. <laughs> <laughs> I got what are really. We I hit womp womp. Oh yes, the womp womp is accidentally tied to also a wolf whistle, so it's a little bit of a mixed message. I was in a bad relationship. I, I'm very. Uh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yes. we love a bad relationship. We were in a bad um, relationship with a shitty guy. Yeah, sorry, my dog's asshole. <laughs> oh my god, it's gaping. <laughs> Did you see that? He gets it's excited. Like, that fucking like that's that for dog's gay looking, male that dog's like I ready apologize. for a colonoscopy any minute now. <laughs> Holy shit! That we asshole think he's is gay fucking. Too. He's on poppers, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's ready. Oh, but he's, he's open sweet. and willing. He's sweet. Um, yeah, I have pit bulls. I was, I've been gay forever without realizing it. Uh, but yeah, I was in a relationship with uh, this. I call him fuckhead. And uh, I wanted to break up with him for years, but it was just one of those toxic things when I just got comfortable. I'm really good at just getting comfortable and just yeah. like, okay, this is what it is. I can continue yeah, life too. like this. So yeah. uh, I tried to break up with him um, and he said no. And then I was like, oh shit. And then a year later, we, we, basically, we were living That's together. Qu- can we pause right there? <laughs> That's amazing to, be, to me that people, including me, have taken no for an answer no. in a breakup situation. I want to break up no. And you're like, all right, I guess I have to rethink yeah. how I was going to live my life because yeah. I'm permanently stuck with you. Yeah. That shouldn't, uh, just for a listener at home, that should not prevent you from breaking up with someone. No. Right? They're always going to say no. <laughs> they don't get a choice That's in the, the matter. Thing. Well, yeah. Apparently for you, they do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> more than a choice. You're a like, demand. they don't get a choice. Really, they have final say, Rachel. <laughs> Now they don't have a choice. I didn't know so this you, before. So they say no, and you say, all right, t- take another year off my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So we continued to live together while also just not speaking. We didn't speak. We lived in the same house and didn't speak for like about a year. He avoided me because he knew I wanted to while break up While you were dating? Yeah, while we were dating. We lived together. And, and you uh, just took it. You just took that on the chin. You did a year of like yeah, really I just- focused- I focused on uh, my job for a really long time, which was great. And I spent a lot of time over at my sister's house. I was barely home. And then uh, I I still was, I didn't realize I was gay. I just had no idea. And I had lost my entire sex drive. And yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I was just like, whatever. And then I opened TikTok one day and there was a, a gay woman and just, d- just did a thirst trap. And I went, well, f- I'm wet. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> Which, what type of gay woman is this? It's it wasn't a type that I'm into at all. Uh, it's it was just the hurt the actions. You were she just was doing. so dry from this man for so yes. long that any yes. woman was yeah. enough. Yes, it, just doing. It's not mind. even a thirst trap. It's just like some mom making spaghetti, <laughs> like a midwestern like, oh, shit, cooking right. video. I mean, it's like you know, she's pouring tomato <laughs> sauce into a pot, and Rachel's like sliding off oh. of her chair. Oh, oh god, I'm into tomatoes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And so then, uh, I took about two weeks to myself to be like, all right, uh, this is a great excuse to actually break up with him. And I got like, 
<laughs> he can't say no to this one. That's oh, homophobic. Tried. I read that in a book. <laughs> I heard on the internet you can't tell someone that they're not gay. But, <laughs> did you, <laughs> I was like, this is it. This is it. Did, so, did you say I'm gay to him? Or you said, yes. or did you yeah, say, what do you think about this video? No. <laughs> Just to see if it has the effect on everyone. And he's like, Aunt Shirley? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I went into his room one day after he asked me if he could have a bed for his office so he could sleep in the office instead of in bed with me. Um, he sent me an email asking this. And I was like, this isn't even a relationship <laughs> anymore. I'm sorry. Were you married? Were you married? Nah, no. Well, then what are you? Then what, to what whom are it you, may concern what are you Rachel. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you jumping through hoops for a boyfriend? It's like the least important title ever. I'm aware. Really is. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. Also, fun fact: he my friends love this fact. Via email, <laughs> dude. Do you know why he Rachel, asked me? Do you know why he asked me for a mattress instead of well, instead of just buying one? Because he didn't have a job. He didn't have a single job the entire relationship. Rachel, I have yeah. not met many people in as fucked up a situation as I was in in my last dark relationship, and. And to hear you be so honest and share this stuff, like this is very vulnerable. Thank you yeah. for sharing it. Oh, you're I welcome. just want you to know that I see you as a recovered codependent, sick person in the head. I this. Oh, I have to hold it down. Yeah, you have to hold oh, it down. We did it, Joe. Yes, thank you're you. We're gonna be the next president. We're gonna be the next independent, healthy relationship person. That's what I. But like, I I really respect you being so honest because a lot of people they, they get into relationships like this and they don't tell well, well we don't know what she did yet <laughs> <laughs> she saw a video and got wet in the kitchen while her boyfriend was sleeping in the office so before we say wow what a story <laughs> hey i i am proud of myself it's a happy ending no uh, i am but you know what it's reminding me of it's reminding me of, you know the shows on mtv it was like i didn't know i was pregnant and they're like eight months oh, yeah. pregnant that's kind of the same as like mm. being in a six year relationship <laughs> and seeing a TikTok video and getting wet. It's like, I didn't know I was a lesbian. <laughs> I had all the signs. It's just all these straight women that see one thing and they're like, whoa, I'm gay. <laughs> right. Exactly. I have always wondered why those women didn't realize they were pregnant <laughs> after not having their period for months right. and months and months. Right. You just ignore the signs. You know, you do. I, you just I, ignore I just ignore it. the signs. I was like, those yeah. don't exist. No, I'm in a relationship. Those that's false. Right. Uh, everyone else knew but me, apparently. When I came out, right. no well, one was the, shocked. You truly are the gayest person. Yes. You were one of the gayer people I've ever met. Wow. Yeah, I, thank you. Just a compliment. this vibe, or yeah, just this vibe. I don't. Know. Were you straight or winking? I don't. Know. <laughs> Who are you winking at? Which wink, just wink, in general, wink. just winking just in general. general. Gay wink. Okay. It's just, yeah. I almost wonder if we should just fully unpack this and make this your gay sex story. Do people? I, I do, have you. I feel like we should. Yeah. Have you vlogged about this? I've I've posted a little bit on the internet. Um, because this I try is fascinating and, to me, and I don't want to bore yeah. bore anyone. But like, I'm fascinated by this. This is my shit. Yeah. No, like, uh, I want to, I don't get it. I want to go, I want to get this. Yeah, and Rachel, can just to ask. fully un unpack this, I dated a straight woman in the closet for three years. So much Ooh. of it was sexless. If we had the space for there to be email correspondence about which rooms we were staying in, we definitely would have been at that level. But we were forced to live in a studio apartment together right. because I wasn't famous on the internet at the time. And yeah. you were. This that was my guy. downfall, was having money. That was it. Right, exactly. Well, this girl was fin financially dependent on me as oh, well, God, but I, I, I really yeah. didn't have any, I really didn't have I'm much money is the thing. Yeah. Oh. Right. So it was Yours not, sounds worse. She could have picked someone better. No, yours was bad. Ashley's was bad. <laughs> Ashley's was really bad. But at least she was gay. You're, at least I know. was gay. Yeah, you, don't you knew who you were. You dick. Like, that's... <laughs> It's just I didn't struggle for it. I was trying to keep it away from me, but I didn't realize why right, you were struggling to keep it away from you. <laughs> yeah, you're just like supporting a penis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was is, unfortunate. That like, that's a little depressing. In that's a way, one of my embarrassing like, moments. In a way, it's like weirdly feminist. Was he you know what I mean? Like, right. Like a man in your house that you're not fucking that you're financially supporting. That really it was a child is the it's your son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. He was basically he my okay? child. Wait, so no. <laughs> Wait, so do you say to him, I'm gay? Or I think yes, I'm gay. Yes, so 
No, I, I so yeah. Uh, after he sent me this email, I, I realized I was gay two weeks, like two weeks prior. Then he sent me this email, being like, "Listen, I think we should sleep in separate beds." And I was like, "No." I was outside mowing the lawn, you know, doing my yard work. I was like, "Fuck this." So, <laughs> is that real? Is that a real detail? That is a real detail. I was, I was out playing softball. I was outside mowing the lawn, playing softball, clipping my nails, <laughs> watching Ellen having sex with women. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, outside, uh, it was truck. all there. <laughs> So I uh, I walked into his office where he was doing yoga and I uh, was is like, he gay? I, I, I questioned it every once in a while. I don't know if he'll ever come to that conclusion, but I, uh, I walked in and I was like, hey, and I was crying and because, you know, I, this big life moment is about to happen for me. I walked right, in right, and I was like, you hey. realized it mowing the lawn like a true yes. fucking lesbian. <laughs> yes. So this is my moment. You were behind and, uh, a John Deere when you figured out that you were gay. <laughs> Oh, okay. I wish I had a John Deere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just have a little electric mower. <laughs> wow. But I, uh, I walked in. He looked at me and goes, what? I'm bawling my eyes out. I never cry. And he just looks at me and says, what? And I was like, I'm gay. And he screams this pterodactyl scream and tears his yoga mat in half and then <laughs> looks at me <laughs> and flew what? away. <laughs> and I haven't seen him since. He flapped <laughs> off into the distance. <laughs> it was uh it was i tried and like i deal with everything with humor it's yoga man it took everything within to me tear. not to laugh in his face like this man was going through it and i was like <laughs> my tears immediately dried up my whole body dried up watching him do this and i was like all right and he just screamed well what am i supposed to do and i was like yep that's the right reaction <laughs> oh this is very uh, strange because yeah he, he's not even but it's not like you're in a relationship where he's even being fulfilled. So right, I wonder exactly. why he's, he's so depressed. He's not. I mean, I guess he didn't want to get you, a job. When you get, oh, he didn't want to get a job. Yeah, yeah. That's have probably, to go back to work. Do you think that's? Really, <laughs> 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 flies away. <laughs> off to find another closeted lesbian that he can mooch off of. <laughs> exactly. But by the way, you're so sure of, of after one video. Yeah. Was that yes. really all it took? It that's took one all video. It took. It, Yep, I clicked and I was like, oh, that's it. And then I was like, well, you know, hashtag lesbians on TikTok, just to double check. Yep, all checks out. Good to go. And uh, I called my best friend. And I was like, hey, I'm gay. And she goes, uh-huh. And what are we going to do with that? And I was like, I guess date women. She was like, sounds good. Oh, that's so and then sweet. I went, and wow. that was it. Yeah. Wait, so I, I, I do want to say when you get into toxic relationships, like it sounds, it's like you might have been in one. It does become like yeah. That whole like Margaret Atwood bathwater quote where like the bathwater is getting warmer or whatever. What is that quote? And then you're boiling. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. How do you cook a lobster? You mean? I guess it's Mm -hmm. also how you cook a lobster, but it's also supposed to be an analogy. It's supposed to be an analogy for like taking people's rights away. You go little by little. Until they're. Until you're used to it. Sort of. Until you're boiled to death. Oh. But I do think with toxic relationships, it gets a little, little, little more toxic. And then you're at the point where you're screaming like a pterodactyl ripping a yoga mat in half. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. There is usually a moment in that toxic relationship where you're like, oh, yeah, I think I think I might. I think I might be in a weird situation. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I realize course. that. It and builds I'm, to this place. Yeah. yeah. And you don't always notice it. And you don't always know how to get out of it. Oh my God, no, of course not. You're, no. you're yeah, you, I it normalizes a, everything. But for anyone in that situation, please know that you're not trapped and no. you can leave at any time. And it doesn't and your matter life, that your they say Your life can no. start over. Yes. Right. It's very yeah. hard to imagine that because you- You feel you, so trapped. And you feel like your li- you, people say, our lives are so entangled. Yes. Where do you begin to sort of like- unwind everything yeah i mean that's what it's i had really to do. overwhelming it's super overwhelming yeah yeah and and for me all i had to do for me this moment was i was living at my mom's while the woman that i was dating was living in the apartment that i was paying for <laughs> wow sorry not mean to laugh at that but that's... no laugh away <laughs> that sucks it's a sad situation yeah and i remember i was in that moment and i finally had the courage to be like she was asking me for something that was like totally beyond like fathoming and yeah. i finally was just like no i'm not gonna do that and i'm not contacting you until we figure out how you're getting out of my apartment yeah and for you. 
I'm coming back in this many days is basically mm-hmm. what I said. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's all it took. That's literally all it took. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. One action can change everything, but it's the anticipation of that and wondering what the results are. But you can, yeah, you, I mean, unless they say no and you stay with them for a year. Yeah. And obviously we're not talking about like, abusive like physically abusive threatening situations there are resources for that and alex i guess we should probably put some of those down in the description yeah (laughs) that's a good thing yeah (laughs) uh yeah maybe i don't know if we need a trigger warning i think maybe just some resources i don't know we'll figure it out yeah we're not experts yeah 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 google it guys Guys, go to google (laughs) just uh take they exist yeah just go find them i thank you so much for sharing that oh you're welcome Listener, don't forget to support the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. That's how we pay Alex. He is a full-time employee of the podcast. We could not pay him on ads alone. Me also. This is full-time work, so please consider going and donating. And in return for those donations, you get bonus episodes. You get comped tickets when I'm in your city. Um, You get extended, unfiltered, uncut episodes, um, weekly access to my Zoom stream of my show in New York, and lots of other stuff. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Also, you're so funny. Oh, thank you. Have you done stand-up? I've attempted. I don't like stand-up. I I feel better in front of a camera than in front of it. I mean, I'm fine on stage with microphones and stuff. I've I've done stuff with my sister. She has a live show. But I like doing camera stuff instead. Podcast. Yeah, it's interesting. When I get on camera and I try to vlog, I used to get these like anxiety attacks. Really? Yeah, because I didn't have the laughter. So I didn't know if I was funny or not. Oh, yeah. That's a little... Because stand-up, you get used to the uh, immediate validation. Yeah. But then you get that with like a guest. But Rachel's kind of hard to crack, so... <laughs> I, I I love Rachel. No, I fucking love Rachel. Are you kidding me? I'm obsessed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just also hard to crack. No, no, no. I think um, she's a good laugher. <laughs> uh, I so look, I don't know fully, you know, if this is in my power as co-host, but can I ask a question? Of course, you could always ask a question. So, so you break up. You break up. Hold right? on, I'm gonna have to go to the authorities. All right. Yeah, yeah. Can we, uh, <laughs> Alex, push this through? Does 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 Allie have permission to ask a question right now? <laughs> to Rachel. <laughs> Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, got this approved. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Can go now. Rachel, <laughs> mm-hmm. you get out of this relationship that yeah. has been hanging over everything, right? Yeah. You're not having sex with the guy, or if you are, you're not liking it. He's living with you. You're focusing on work. Tell me about now you start dating women. Yeah. Are you liberated? What is that like? Are you just okay. dripping everywhere? You just yeah. out mowing your lawn, playing yeah. softball. You ner- are you I'm nervous? I'm so mopping it up. <laughs> um, yeah, I was nervous, but I also can fake confidence pretty easily. And then, you know, fake it till you make it kind of mm-hmm. is like my slogan. So yeah. I actually like I wasn't heard planning. that before. I know. Is That's that a great. Rachel original? Is, is that a Rachel? <laughs> is that a Rachel Ballinger? Are you being facetious here? <laughs> we are. We're being facetious. Yeah. Facetious. Uh, but, uh, facetious. Facetious. Scissoring. Sorry. No, you're good. That's when lesbians are facetious. What? I haven't learned that part yet. I'm still new. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, you'll get there, kid. Uh, Yeah, so I wasn't planning on dating. And my therapist was like, hey, you need to get on a dating app. And I was like, I don't want to. I was like, I'm going to just... what, Chill what for a little what, bit. What do you mean you're not planning on dating? You just get wet from the TikTok it was, video. It was you mid COVID. Yeah. Now you're not going to date. What's going on? It was yeah. it was 2020. It was like mid COVID. It was at the it oh. was like October of 2020, and I was like, nah. Uh, you know, nah, I'm like, I was catching fingers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a. I, my family <laughs> the season was like, opens up. I, the mitt. You, your hand was in the mitt. My hand was in the mitt. <laughs> yeah, but you. So you're blaming it on the virus now. I huh? was blaming it on the virus, but really, I was just I was content. You know, not I had lived you know well, sexless you, for quite some time, and it's I was so funny that you're such a like a big personality, and you allow yourself to be so free on the internet, and yet you couldn't allow yourself to do this. That's interesting to me. Yeah, uh, I don't. I can't explain it. Uh, but then finally, I was bored uh, right before Christmas. It was like December, and uh, my therapist had been bugging me like every session. Like, hey, did you download Hinge yet? I was like. Nope. And then uh, I was bored and I protected my best friend. Why is your friend? therapist pressuring Sponsored you to get on Hinge? hinge. The therapist that, did you, did you get Hinge yet? Hinge. The app that. meant to be deleted? <laughs> did you get it? That woman knew I needed to get laid was what it was. <laughs> She's like, all of your problems stem from you I not having like sex. I do like the idea of therapists being approached by dating apps the way that like doctors are being <laughs> approached amazing. by f- big pharma. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have you tried Bumble? It worked. Where you hold the power. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why do you know all the fucking? No, I don't know it. I don't know the fucking. I made that one up. Hinge, I knew. Bumble, I don't know. But Bumble, Tinder, I could see a Tinder. Tinder. Come on, Bumble, like a Tinder. You want to fuck now? But I, that's it. That's I could the, see Bumble it. being like they could play on women who want to like you know really be empowered. The the Lex one, Lex. You want to get I, weird and never see anybody? I don't know that one. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh. Okay, so your therapist gets you on. Your therapist gets you my, on Hinge. Yeah, which well, is the first time she'd I've been said bugging that. me, but I was I was bored, and my best friend was like, "Hey, you should uh, download a dating app tonight for my entertainment." And I was like, "All right." And so I did it out of boredom, and uh, I, you know, a few girls were messaging me, and I was like, "I'm not feeling it." And I was like, "Well, now I'm like questioning everything." I, I had a, a girls in my inbox, and I was just like, "I don't, I'm not feeling anything," and then. I was on the app for three days, and then my now girlfriend messaged me and asked me out. And that's nothing. Three days. Yeah, I know. That's nothing. What did I she? Know what was the message? What did it say? Um, on my okay, on Hinge, you know, it gives you prompts, and it was yeah. like, uh, I said, say what's something you believe in, and I said, until last year, I wholeheartedly believed that dragons existed. It was my prompt because <laughs> I'm an idiot, and uh, she responded and said, uh dragons that's uh she's like i would love to talk about this further uh over drinks in downtown santa barbara um when can i take so, you out so very was, standard very yeah. standard fare there nothing yeah, crazy and, no but i went to her profile and it was like the hottest woman i've ever seen in my entire life and i was like yep okay and the pics will be i just on the started patreon <laughs> Put the nudes on the Patreon. You saw that, right? Uh, That's a part of coming no. on. <laughs> Allie, you should just host this podcast. No. Shh. You're doing so well. I am? You know what's so nice? What? I'm bottoming on this episode. No, uh, You're topping. <laughs> and I'm bottoming. You switched. Don't switch. You? I'm and it's switch. nice. It's, I'll nice, say, to, I'll sit it's back. nice to relax. I'll sit back. No, no, no. I'm encouraging you. Okay, keep going. She wants to sit back and relax. <laughs> so you That's go, what I'm saying. I'm busy. Fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take the wheel on this. So you go downtown. <laughs> No, well, I didn't actually. We we she was a, it was Christmas time, so she was back home for two weeks. Uh, and oh, and then I was just, in LA oh, still. You're just texting, texting, steamy, and FaceTiming, texting. Yeah, anticipation. Uh, yeah, is that built up? And then mid, so we talked very queer, yes. very queer beginning. But it you're was having lesbian. That's sex. that's lesbian. <laughs> Before you've had lesbian sex, yeah. So how, yeah. how are you even te- how are you even fantasy texting? Yeah, yeah. You about known. a mythical thing. You see what I'm saying? You're like, I want to do the sex to you, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever this sex turns out to be, I'm gonna do it. You're yeah. gonna like it <laughs> as soon as I figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then we met up in person mid January and. Um, I just like kind of acted like I knew what I was doing and apparently I did it well. And then it's been a good sense. You know, what is a great lesson though? Wow. A huh. lot of people are afraid for their first, I really am cancel coaching. You're doing all the riffs and the jokes and I'm coming in with the thoughtful notes and the trigger warnings and that, and the, yeah, I, get, I am. Get out of your head. <laughs> Every time we record, I have to be like, stay present <laughs> no i am being present no, I, I know li- i like what's happening okay i'm glad I'm, you're having I'm a good time it. but what you're saying is you somehow very naturally you know you you were sexting with this person that you mm-hmm. had yeah. no idea wh- how it was supposed to sound you'd never yeah. been with a woman before yeah. and you just let it happen and you didn't get in your head about it like sometimes how i'm feeling right now about bottoming oh, God. you didn't get yeah. in your head about it and yet you were so good at it and it worked out because it was natural. And I think a lot of people have that fear going into lesbian dating that, oh my God, it's yeah. going to be this. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. Girls are so scary. And if you're just like, let yourself just enjoy it. I just it went with works. It. Yeah. yeah. And my girlfriend is someone who I'm very, very comfortable with. We, we clicked right away. So like, I didn't feel, I didn't feel nervous ever. I was just, and you're it, so it felt gay. very natural. The first woman you went on a date with, you've been with now for a year and a half. You probably moved in together. Yeah, of course we did. Eight months in, I bought a yeah. house and, <laughs> and, uh, and we moved in together. So yeah, and you have wow. been a year and a half. Well, and we have wow. three dogs. Yeah. Three dogs. Three gay. dogs. And a chameleon. Okay. So I, I'm curious um, about this and I'm genuinely curious about this. You're hosting. So, you, so go for it. You yeah, leave, yeah. You're topping. You leave the boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And you're bored. 
Yeah. And you're I'm I'm going to accept the fact that your instinct isn't to go fuck a million women, even though it's very hard for me and my experience as and a mine. closeted and gay mine. woman yeah. To, yeah. to understand that. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious When and, was your first hook up with a woman? Uh like I hooked up with women in high school, but my first time like having what I feel was like sex with a woman was in college. Okay. Um but the the idea that I would break up with someone and know I'm gay and then not rush to explore that is really interesting to me. And I'm like, do you think that's a sex drive thing? Uh, no, I have a very high sex drive. And <laughs> I'm very... <laughs> so, and, no, and I don't no, mean No, 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 I, I fuck totally, the shit out of anything that moves. No, and I totally yeah. don't mean that. In My like dog's a, asshole, huge, because I did give him poppers. And thank God we had this scheduled, because I don't know what would have happened. Look, look, I think that a lot of people have... Di- I think there's a huge discrepancy in sex drives. Yes. Spe- and people don't talk about it. And I'm just yes. curious, what was the... What, I don't, I just... Were you, just, were you stewing on it? Were you like, I'm a... Were you marinating? No. Um, I don't quite know what it was. Um, I very much wanted to, and the drive was there. Um, I... It's a big decision. It is a big decision, but also, I truly, I think it was, my, I, my family, it was during COVID, my family was in a COVID bubble. We weren't, right, I wasn't right. allowed it's to go the to the COVID grocery store. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to go do a random hookup and then not see my family for two weeks because yeah. 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 that's, I think Especially that's generally what it was. Especially coming out. Right. Yes. So uh, I was like, I needed to be surrounded by my people. I just okay, went, fine. Just I'll broke take up. It. And so I was like, if I'm going to leave my family's little COVID bubble, um, it's got to be for someone I really like. And yep. I met my girlfriend yeah. and I really like her. And then I said, bye family and went and lived with her. <laughs> and she's the first date. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. She's the first date. Yeah. And it'll definitely work out forever. That's um, my hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She's the one. <laughs> it, it, she's the one. It might. You're 30. Like when you meet someone when you're 30, it's so different than when you're meeting someone when you're like, I feel like you really know what you want at that point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just the added element of. The first woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, that's also, I mean, look, it's a, it's like, that's the story of lesbian dating yeah. is the first woman. Yeah. I mean, you know that story, right, Rachel? No. The story oh, is, you don't stay with the first woman. I read but, my own story. However. Some of the Rachel however, fans that came just to listen to Rachel are like, what the fuck? How, no, this, but however. This is, <laughs> this is some really intense, Rachel. Here's the thing, Rachel. Take it from two old, weathered lesbians. You know what two they say? Water- they say the like- first will never be the last. <laughs> you gotta leave her. Use her body. Uh, use her and body. And leave her. Learn and leave it's her. It's a coloring book. Fill in the lines. <laughs> Fill, Fill in, in the, lines. the lines. You can move on to more advanced stuff later. But right now, you just gotta color in the play, lines. Play, play around. Yeah, like a sandbox <gasps> kid. Explore. You know, pussies look different. <laughs> Every pussy looks different. You yeah, there's see innies four, and outies like pussies. your belly button. Nobody talks about that. You got an innie and out. No, no man in the history of, of vaginas has ever talked about the way an innie versus look, looks versus an outie. And it's we're true. doing it here on our two guys hanging out podcast. Yeah. I like them both. <laughs> I, I have no way to respond to you guys when you talk and you guys. Yeah, this is, we're sick in the head. <laughs> Listen, but I am, my, uh, my fiance uh, has never dated a woman before me, so. What? Oh. So you're projecting. Yeah. No, so I'm saying from my experience, from my I, I never would have felt comfortable staying with. I'm just sharing my experience. Oh, you, it I sounds am like very you're, comfortable with it. I, I know. Are we in a fight? Okay. We are fighting. Thank it's you for fight. that gay sex. I think we have to take Rachel off the hot, hot seat because we went from practically ignoring Rachel to digging into the deep, <laughs> deep crevasses. <laughs> of I can talk forever. I'm good. Her life. Listener. You, you know I love to bang. And you know I'm always like into trying new stuff. And something that's coming in my life in the last year is Foria. And I absolutely love their products. Because I didn't know that my orgasms could get bigger, more powerful, and feel more full. But then I started to use Foria's plant-based and CBD-based products. Oh my God. Imagine the best orgasm you've ever had. Now imagine it even better. That's what Foria did for me. And don't just take my word for it. Foria has a serious cult following with tens of thousands of people who've had their sex lives transformed through using their products. Here's a real testimonial. My wife and I use a sex oil and awaken, and when she gets on top, we both come so hard that we see sounds and hear colors. And what's an arousal oil? Well, awaken is like a juicy warm-up that helps you get really turned on, increasing your pleasure and deepening your orgasms with a partner or solo. 
And it can also help reduce pain and discomfort if that's something that you need some help with. So yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more, deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible. And you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley and use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order. I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil. You'll thank me later, listener. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season, or maybe for someone that you love who has balls. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all the people in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December and save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. And if you're not looking for something to, to trim the downstairs area, you got to check out the new Preserve Cologne. That brings a light, breezy, woodsy feel and gives that fresh tree scent even after Christmas is over. Or are you still using a loofah? Well, introducing the new body buffer. Loofahs actually hold bacteria from dead skin. Help your buddy throw out that old disgusting loofah and get the body scrubber that feels smoother but acts tougher. Lastly, top off the stocking with the crown jewel for any person's family jewels, the Lawnmower 4.0. The electric razor's advanced skin safe technology is a life changer and known for reducing nicks and cuts on their Santa sack. Manscaped is here to make the holiday shopping a blast by giving products that they'll love and make them laugh. So save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash gay20. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Did you have gay sex this week? Oh my God, look at you topping now. <laughs> I did have gay sex this week. Do you have a story that you want to sh- uh, share? Because we are we did so much on Rachel, I want to make sure. story I want to share? Yeah, like. About gay sex? Yeah, gay sex story. Um, uh, ba, ba, ba. I just was telling a story the other day that wasn't recent, though. I have a story, but I don't know that it's a quickie. I, I had sort of a longy for this week. So don't I don't know if we it, have Ash. time. Don't tell it, Ash. It's your show. What? Tell it. It's your show. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, come on. Well, I, I, had a, I had fun gay sex this week. I, I went on a date this week. <gasps> really? I haven't been on a proper. It's hot. Yeah, I haven't been on like a proper get dressed up, go and do something date. But I went on one this week. Where'd you go? What, we went to the Blue Note. We went to go see you Jazz chose at the that? Blue Note. No, she did. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. yeah no, the Blue, Blue Note. Note. We went to the Blue Note. It was so fun because she suggested it. And I'm going to be honest. I was feeling tired. My hip hurts. I'm moving. <laughs> I have a lot going on. Your hip hurts? My hip hurts. All the fucking time. Help. Okay. Wow. So. <laughs> I'm working on How it. How old are you? I'm 34. I have a problem. I have a joint. Got it. Joint My knees hurt. You're good. Yeah. So at first I was like, oh, I'm going to be tired. But then I was like, no, no, no. Because I, I took this happiness class. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. Of course. The ha- this happiness class that I took from Yale. It's a science class. It always says, like, say yes to things like that. Mm. Even if you think it's the thing that you don't want to do, it's like opposite action. Do the thing. Right. You know going and having a fun immersive turn off your phone experience is going to be better at the end of the day. Of course. So always. I said, yes, against my gut instinct. I'm so mm-hmm. glad that I did. We went, I'd never seen live jazz before. Oh, it's so fun. Oh, it's and fun. I had so much fun. I was bopping. I never yeah. bop. I was scared. I was bopping. <laughs> Damn. And you'd never met her before. No, no, no. This is uh, my main, main situation. Oh, wow. That's not a first. That's not a first date. No, it's not a first date. Okay. Got it. Did I say so it, was it was just a date date? date. No, you date just date. said like a proper date. I, I don't know why in my head I was like, I was like, oh, this is like a stranger danger. But, no, no. Okay. Still, it's still I thought that too, so but she never said that. I don't know why I assumed that. I, was I like, thought Whoa, it too, okay. but that's good. I feel like I disappointed my, my parents. Sorry. We're, no, it's no less- we're happy for you. We're happy for you. So you go on the date date. What's it like? We get dressed up. Yeah. We're both dressed up. We both look nice. What the fuck is dressed down. up for you, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. I'm sorry. I put on my fancy cap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I put on my my satin I, I'm baseball just, cap. I, I, was that really rude? Do you think? No. 
Okay. I just was curious what your sort of formal attire is. Like, uh, like I, I had a kind of a silky button Ooh. down. Okay. Shit. Vibe. I don't know how to describe it. That's a, that's a vibe. I like the shirt. Yeah. And I put on jewelry. <laughs> what do you wear? I have, I have jewelry. But like rings or necklaces? Yeah, I have rings and necklaces. Oh that's what God. I wore. Rings and necklaces. I, I would love. Did you I wear really slacks? That. I'll show you my suit. Did I not show you the suit that I went to the wedding in? No. Let me show you this. I'll I think show you Rachel guys are in a friend fight so. now. <laughs> no, we're not. This is how we talk. <laughs> Let me okay. go back to my suit. We've we've been through a lot, so have we? You know, time. It doesn't matter. It's like time compounds relationships. It so does. It really does. It's like I've known you for a while. I don't think we're gonna cut yeah. each other out. So the suit. Soon. This is this is us at the wedding, but I. Damn, you can't see this I like suit. that suit. You look great. Thank you. You look cool. That's me. fresh. Oh, I like it. I yeah. love it. I so love like it. So, kind of a shirt like that. Almost. That's awesome. It was short sleeve though. Yeah, and we went to the blue note. I was bopping, and I was watching this as a comedian. I I never do stuff like this because yeah. we're out every night. We don't go yeah. to things. Yeah. And I was like, I have to make more time to go to nightlife. And also I watched and there were hecklers and loud people. And it was so informative to watch how the jazz musicians dealt with it. Because it's such a that? different thing. Wait, people well, were heckling at all. jazz? Yes, because people, people heckled <laughs> in this way that they don't realize. Is, people don't realize that heckling is any. First of all, they don't realize that comedians don't heckle audience members. That's one of my worst Oh, you heckled me at your show. No, you heckled me and I crowd worked you. That's <laughs> one of one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But th- what they'll do is they'll say something like someone was like, sign my playbill autograph. Like, will you sign um, it? Like in the middle of the show. It's that hot of a jazz show that people are like, sign my tits. Not <laughs> my playbill. Who says sign my playbill I in the know. middle of a jazz show? It was really funny because she, the girl that I brought, she riffed in the middle of it because at one point, you know, I don't know anything about jazz. And the guy running the show, he said, oh, we're going to do a, a song by so-and-so. And all the white tourists in the room were like, mm. <laughs> and I was like, you guys don't know who that is. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, that's just They're funny. Just that trying they're just trying to be good. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to be good audience yeah. members. So yeah. it was fun to watch them and to learn as a performer, but I have not felt that immersed in watching something. You're adding a, the sax to your act. Yeah, I'm yeah. adding a Well, she was gay. The saxophonist was definitely gay. Uh-huh. But it was just so much fun. Yeah. And we didn't even have sex that night. We had sex the next morning. <laughs> but oh. like, it was just really fun to feel, to do something out of your comfort zone that you haven't done in a while. And it yeah. just felt so nice. I know maybe... It also made me reflect on how lucky I am to be someone's night out. Like Aww. as a performer that people would like get dressed oh, up when and come, people come to, to your show. show and maybe they they feel more connected at That's the end so of it. That's so sweet. And it really refreshed my view on what I do for a living and I was like I really got to stop yelling at these lesbians so much. I really <laughs> yell at the lesbians. <laughs> me too. I'm addicted. Why the lesbians? Because they're quiet. Oh, oh. yeah, I don't get oh. as many of those, but I just love just going after the Yeah, audience. crowd working is so fun. It's so fun. But it's also, it's amazing when you step out of your usual routine with someone you're dating. Yes. Even just putting on different, like, clothing, dressing yes. up. Yeah. Going into a new space. You can re-energize your relationship. Totally. And I think doing stuff like that regularly, once or twice a month, is really important and keeps things healthy and Especially fun. because lesbians yeah. live together. Yeah, they do. So get out of your comfort get zone. Get out of your Put comfort yourself zone, in a yeah. new environment. Otherwise, the two of you will just melt into a pile of flannels. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, and we were walking down the train platform, and we were holding hands. Mm. And this girl, definitely queer, went up to my date and was like, I love your dress. And she turned to me, and she goes, do you think she would have said that to me if we weren't holding hands, if it weren't like a gay date? Mm. And I was like, Ooh. absolutely not. Oh, and oh, that's interesting. I love the gay camaraderie. A queer person will just see you oh, on your yeah. date and compliment you. I love that. I've never had that happen. Are you serious? No, but what I do have happen is if I see like lesbians out in public, I want to like let them know that I'm one of them. Yeah. So oh, I like, yes. make eyes. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like me. 
but they're like, stop staring at me. But I want to be like, I'm one of you. I'm one of you. They're like, this is my sister. Okay. Have you thought about being like, ah. like that? Yeah, because I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah, just do some scissoring I'm being motion. Homophobic. Yeah, do this. But I want to be connected. Yeah, Lesbians I be like, love it when you walk up to them and do this. Yeah. Just finger yeah, scissors. Exactly. But if I'm with Julian and we see like a couple, I'm like, let's kiss too. Show them. Show them. We're like allies on this island. Yeah. You know, I think that's what that girl was trying to do. Oh, that's cool. Overall, the night was just really fun. The dressing up, getting out of the comfort zone, the other lesbians saying hello. A, a really great night. 10 yeah, out of 10. That is so lovely. Yeah, it really is. And then we came home and watched uh, some of the finale from The Bachelorette. Oh, oh wow. wonderful way to end the evening. And to end it in a straight way. Yeah, I got yeah. to put some straightness in there. Yeah. But that's my that's my gay sex from this week. You got a quickie? Oh, Anything you want to throw in? Um, no, I don't really have a gay sex story from this week. I have been in New York. Julian is in LA. I haven't had sex this week. I'm sorry. No, sorry, folks. Unfortunately. Um, I will have sex tomorrow. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks so much. And is it in the calendar? Well, Julian arrives in New York tomorrow. And you miss each other. No, but I assume I'll get to have sex with her. <laughs> no, no, of course. I miss her. I miss her dearly. And uh, yeah, just counting down to be reunited with my lover. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, was la I, was, I did a podcast before this, and we were talking about, I was ta we were talking about women, you know, how they're crazy. Um, and I was <laughs> saying how I was hooking up with this woman. They're nuts. They're absolutely insane. How do we deal with These them? These women are nuts. Can't live with them. Can't live without it. Yeah, I'm you're telling me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was hooking up with this woman right after college, and she was married to a man. Oh, shit. And we were hooking up. You're sort of into older women. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I am so fucking into older women. They are so hot. What is it? It's yeah, why, like, why, do you, why are you? Usually people have a reason. Because it's like... It's like, oh, you, you're wise and you choose me? It's like, so you're real, like, it's like, I'm that good? I'm that good that someone with, like, experience chooses me? It's okay. Like, damn. One of the greatest curators in the world <laughs> has chosen my work. I just, I don't know. Like, I love an older woman. Like, I love someone that has had experience. I love that they're, like, they're not, like, impressed by dumb shit. Mm. <laughs> it's a they're, ego like, boost. They're, like, tired. They just, like, they just drop their kids off somewhere. I don't know. I, anyway, I was hooking up with this woman. She was, she's married and she, I remember she said to me, she goes, are you seeing other people? Or like, are we like, is it like just us? And I'm like, uh, you're married. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the epitome of women. I'm, she wanted to be exclusive I'm, with I'm, me. I'm pretty sure you're seeing other people. Yeah, I'm like, I think yeah. you're, you have a husband. Yeah, was it? Now wait, I have questions. Yeah. A man, it was a man she yeah. was married to. Yeah, which also added to the term. I was, was very it, turned was on Was it by this. secretive? Was it, was it an affair or was it a, was it like an arrangement? No, no, she was, she was having an affair. That? Damn, dude. Yeah. I would like to say. What would you like to say? Yeah. I, I would just like to say in my book of ethics, you're not the problem in that. No. no. If someone is choosing to have an affair, look, you might die. You don't want to get involved. In I'm not dying. Dude, I, I would be afraid of dying. No. Husbands? No. Men, angry men? No. I don't fuck with it. You're not gonna, you're gonna be mad at me? Yeah. Me, what are you gonna do? You can't do anything to me. Have you met men? Yeah, yeah they but can do I'm like, pretty much whatever they want. They can tear a <laughs> yoga mat in half and fly the fuck down to your, to no, your place. And I know, I just think, <laughs> what is like a big guy gonna come like beat up, it's like beating up like a little kid. I know, they would have to really, <laughs> like, you are like tiny. Get that American girl all over here and I'm gonna <laughs> take her bracelets away. Like what are you gonna, <laughs> if your wife is fucking me, you have bigger problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, this isn't even a person. What's going on here? Yeah. Um. I don't know what made me think. Oh, I don't know. We were talking about that earlier. Why I thought it was you funny. Like older I thought women. it was funny. And she would she would try and find ways to like sneak out. And she was like, my husband only he doesn't complain when I leave the house if I give him a blowjob. <gasps> so I just have to give him a blowjob and then I'll be free Ew. this weekend. That that's like a terrible thing to say to someone right before you go hook up with them. I feel like that oh, would I make was thinking, you. I was a, like, do what, what you got to do, babe. Make it <laughs> make it good so we get an extra. Just night. make sure you get some Listerine before you come over and. But I was young. I was young. Yeah, okay. I was young. That's so crazy. Those straight marriages. 
But you know, Ashley- I think it's bad marriages, just bad marriages. Yeah. I mean, you are also, I don't know if you would, if I would say, I can't say for certain if you're attracted to straight women, you can tell me that, but I do <laughs> LOL, know, yeah. but I do know, yeah, we're both really attracted to straight women. And yes. Oh, I'm not this, at all. Oh, really? Yeah. You'll find out in five years when you see a TikTok, Rachel. Right now, you're still learning, yeah. Rachel. You're still learning. <laughs> Don't you want to taste the forbidden fruit? Yes. No. It's you just... ever had a fresh peach? <laughs> you ever have a fresh peach? You ever have a Georgia peach? It's juicy. George's peach. <laughs> George's peach. That's well, good. it sounds like all your straight women uh, hookups have been messy, so I'm going to learn like from a that peach. experience. Like a peach. Ripping down your, th- <laughs> your chin. That, right, Rachel, to be fair, that was just one of them. You haven't heard oh, the Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'll say... Ashley had the, one. But I'll say, <laughs> but my best one, a bat, 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 we're engaged. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that, she that went pretty before. well. Never dated a woman before me. Wow. Did there she, you know? how'd you guys meet? We both kind of hooked up with the same guy. <laughs> I didn't tell you this. This needs to be a whole, this ass is a whole own episode. We'll do that on the, on, it's a, it's a we'll really do it on good Friday thing. or yeah. Thursday whenever we're recording. It's today. too big of a deal. Wow. You're going to lose it. I Precursor. can't believe I told you that story. I'm kind of sad I'm not going to be there for that. You I guess I can listen. Shit. Rachel, do you want to be a co-host? Back. Sure. <laughs> come back. I'll come, come back. back. Sure. Just Seriously. to hear that story. Yeah, I'll go yeah. back. I'm having fun. Well, that was, we'll put a pin in that. Yeah. And we'll do that next time and we'll do butt plugs right now. So get your dog out. So get your dog out. <laughs> come here, please. Get your dog and your chew toy. <laughs> We're going to plug away. Uh, Rachel, am I supposed to butt plug? You? Yeah. Oh, they can find me on YouTube. Just search my name, Rachel Ballinger. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. I have a bunch of stuff. I'm not really working on anything new right now, but I do like my podcast, Rachel Uncensored. That's my favorite. So if you want to check that out, go for it. you be my friend for real? Because I like you. Yeah. Yeah, I love okay. you too. I'm down. Let's hang out when oh. you come for your show in Irvine. Here's your butt plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want to learn. I also want to learn because I'm trying to do the YouTube. Yeah. All right. I'll teach you some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. would love that. All right, and cool. You're you're fun. I think you should do stand up comedy. I think. Oh, thank you. What if we did a video where you where you, you teach me comedy? Yeah. yeah, if you want to teach me stand up comedy, yeah, sure. Yeah, you yeah. should do that. That's okay. Funny. All right, do I'm down. Really You'll be in L.A. You can help. I'll be there. I don't think you should do it. Oh, <laughs> because I don't think <laughs> anyone should do stand up. No one. No, it does do seem soul crushing. It I've known is a few. A horrible idea. But I yeah. would like to witness it. Yeah. All right, I'll do it for you. We're but, gonna do it. All and right. Then, Allie, I'll what be in the you, audience. Yeah. What are you working on? What am I working on? Uh, my podcast, the Allie Colbert Show. Great podcast. I've done it many a time. Yeah. Me, my shows, Allie Colbert on everything. You're touring. Yeah. You're at the best clubs in the world. <laughs> I'm some places. I'm on the internet. You can follow me there. And then me, you little piece of shit. We have merch. We have tour dates. <laughs> Get on my text list. This is impossible without Patreon. We look at, we have Alex, we have Sydney, we have a studio. I'm shooting a special. Please, for the love of God, $1 a month. If everyone did just $1 a month, I would never have to ask you again. <laughs> Patreon.com slash WHGS. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Consider giving a dollar. I'm gearing up to... to to make this special, so I would so, so appreciate it. Patreon.com slash WHGS. But if you can't support that way, go follow me and Maddie, especially Maddie. Maddie's really trying to build up their fan base, and that would be so helpful for them. That's such a great way to give back to the pod. Um, or go you know, sign up for my text alerts. That's another thing that kind of keeps me in business. Um, so go check out AshleyGavin.com. Get on the text alert. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I, I'm having a busy day. And so this is, I'm exercising self-care. This is self-care. I'm not doing this, the, the gay thought, and that is a boundary that I'm setting right now. And this is self-care. And you, because you are Gen Z, you have to, I'm saying I'm setting a boundary, so you don't get mad at me. <laughs> All right, truly, though, guys, have a good week. I, I love being able to connect with you in these little, in these little moments. You are the best.